السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless his household, his companions and every one of us and humanity at large. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, I am so, so honored to be given the task to speak about one of the wealthiest of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. He was very, very rich. And it didn't start at the beginning of his life. He did not inherit that wealth from someone, but rather he earned it. He earned it more so after the hijrah. And this is a very important lesson that we're going to learn. Sometimes we lose things. Sometimes we lose wealth. Sometimes we've lost a lot of money. We might have lost a job. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. A day will come when Allah will bestow upon you whatever was written for you. And you will never die until you eat the last morsel that is written next to your name. You will never die until you have in full whatever wealth, whatever sustenance was supposed to be yours. So who is this great man? His name is Abdul Rahman ibn Awf. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu. He was born and his parents had given him a different name. Some narrations say they gave him a name Abdul Kaaba, the worshipper of the Kaaba. Some narrations say he was given the name Abdul Amr. The worshipper of Amr. And so the Prophet ﷺ gave him the name Abdul Rahman. And from this we learn that although most of the companions, when they accepted Islam, they did not change their names. They did not change the name. It's not a condition that the name be changed, except when the meaning of that name is bad, then it should be changed. Especially when it is haram, like you say, worshipper of the Kaaba. He had a better name, worshipper of Ar Rahman, the most merciful. So Abdul Rahman ibn Awf was 10 years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which means when prophethood had come to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was 40, and Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu was 30. So, how did he accept Islam? He accepted Islam by the effort of the man I spoke about earlier today, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Remember I told you to have good company because your company will remind you about what is right and wrong. If you are not interested in having good company, how do you expect to be reminded time and again? And when people remind you, don't feel bad. Listen to the reminder. If they are right, take it from them. If they are right, take it from them. And if they are wrong, Excuse them with a smile, even if you have braces. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. It's quite painful, by the way. I started becoming conscious of the people who have braces after I got mine two weeks ago. And I noticed a brother, mashallah, with huge hair. Moments ago, I actually had to take a picture with him and put it on Instagram. And one thing I noticed immediately was his braces, subhanallah. You know, they say when you buy a car, you suddenly notice people with the same car. Before that, you didn't even know. Subhanallah, it's amazing. May Allah grant us goodness. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu, he was in the company of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. You know who their friends were? And I want to show you when you interact with the best, you can become one of the best. The friends of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, Zubair ibn al-Awwam, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, Uthman ibn Affan, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas. Did you hear five names? Five of them are from among the ten who were given good news of Jannah by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all five of them were encouraged to enter Islam by Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So not only did he encourage them to enter Islam, but it was so powerful, so convincing that they became the best of the Muslims. Imagine you are a friend of someone, they go to Jannah and suddenly because you also became a good person, you're granted Jannah. That's exactly what happened with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He was a friend of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He accepted the message first. He went to his buddies and he told his buddies, you know what guys, you need to listen to this. This is the man. He's come with a message. He's speaking the truth. He's speaking whatever is correct. We better follow him and you guys better come along. They took 
He took them to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They heard a few words. They became Muslimin. Subhanallah. Each one has a unique story. But Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu, who was not so wealthy at the beginning. But guess what? He was one of those who became even wealthier by being told, you are from Jannah. May Allah make it easy for us. I always sit and I think, imagine if we were told you are from Jannah. <laughs> I wonder what we would do. Subhanallah. You are from Jannah. I see a lot of the young people. You know what they might say? Wow. I've achieved my goal. I no longer need to what? I no longer need to pray. I no longer need to do anything. I don't need to worry about anything. With the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they, that was not the case. When they were told you are from Jannah, it made them stronger because Jannah has ranks. Subhanallah. It made them more powerful, closer to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us Jannah. Amen. Say Amen. MashaAllah. That was a nice loud Amen. And may Allah grant us goodness in the dunya as well. So this man, as he grew older, like I explained, he became a Muslim. What was his description? He was tall. He was reddish, fair in complexion. He was actually a person who was quite big, you know, tall, a big person, fair in complexion. And at the same time, very good looking, mashallah, handsome guy. Initially, they began to persecute him among others. And he made a hijrah to Abyssinia. He actually had to flee. He went with the people who went to Abyssinia to Najashi at the beginning. And listen to the beginning because a lot of us, we make money the main aim in our lives. Not realizing that yes, while it is very important, it's not the main aim. It is there and we will give it some importance because we'd like to live and a lot of us would like to lead a comfortable life. But ask yourself, the more the comfort are you becoming closer to Allah or distant? That's the thing. We sometimes get a lot of wealth and as a result, we forget Allah. Well, here is an example of a person who started getting so much of wealth. And you know what? That brought him so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he had a few names that were given to him. You know, like you have Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. As-Siddiq was like a title given to him. You have Umar, it, he had a, a title Al-Farooq. You have Abdul Rahman, he has a title al ghaniyu Shakir. He, that means the one who is so wealthy and yet so thankful to Allah. Humble, humble. So humble that you won't even tell this is the man who gave so much. I remember I went to one country recently and I was sitting with a brother who had built a few masajid. And speaking to him, we asked him about what, you know, some of the interesting things that happened in his life. And he says, you know, I was once going for Salat al Jum'ah and there was a parking slot. They didn't allow me to park there because the warden or whoever was there told me to move just like everyone else. No one knew that he had built the masjid. And he says, as tempting as it may have been to tell him, hey, listen, let me park here. You know, I'm the one who built the masjid. He said, I didn't say that. Because in my heart, I told myself, I will sell my whole contribution for a parking. Subhanallah. So he said, I left it, I parked with everyone else and I walked. Later on, he said, there was another masjid some time later at, in a different city. 10 o'clock in the night, he needed to actually wash up and so on. And he thought, you know, we've built a masjid here. Let's go there and we will try and see what happens. And as he went there, they told him, sorry, it's closed. We're not going to open this place. It's closed. Everyone's gone. And they did not. And he says, again, as tempting as it may have been to tell the guy, you know what, I built this masjid. I just like to use the bathroom, you know. I didn't do that because I thought to myself, relieving myself, and I probably sold the whole project in the wrong cause. May Allah make us from among those. Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu, he had this habit. He used to do good quietly. They only found out later what he used to do. He used to send finances, money as gift to a lot of the people, the widows, and subhanallah, those who were poor without anyone knowing that he did this. Now, how did he get this wealth? Well, he made the hijrah to Habasha. Thereafter, he made the hijrah to al Madina. When he got to Medina Munawwara, there was something unique happening, something amazing that was happening. It was called al Mu'akha, the fostering of a brotherhood between the people from Mecca and the people of Medina. So there was a man by the name of Sa'd ibn al Rabi'ah. Sa'd ibn al Rabi'ah was one of the wealthiest of the Ansar, meaning of the people of Medina. 
So they loved the people who came from Mecca so much. Although in our terms today, if people had to come in similar circumstances, we would call them refugees. Agreed? Refugee. That's a camp. They've come from a refugee camp and so on. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, it was so easy. The thousands who came from Mecca, he got a family from Medina, each family taking one family, each family taking one, each family take, and you know what? They were dispersed and they were looked after, well looked after by their brothers and sisters from the Ansar. May Allah make us from among those who care for each other. Today when a donation is being asked for, and it shouldn't be asked for, we should donate before they ask us. But even if it is being asked for, we sometimes feel ashamed. You know what my sister, my brother, even if it means one pound, one dollar, even if it means two or five, it makes a difference. I'm sure you might have seen the signs at certain businesses where they say, your change will make a change. Your change will make a change. That's a very good catch line. I tell you why. Your change does make a change. You think, well, it's 25p, 10p. That 10p, 25p means a lot. Imagine if a thousand people gave 1025p, what do we have? We've got 200 pounds, 250 pounds, if my calculation is correct. If not, then at least 25 pounds, subhanAllah. <laughs> we can do something with it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. So, Abdurrahman ibn Auf had this brother of his by Mu'akha in Medina Munawwara known as Sa'ad ibn Rabi'ah radiallahu anhu. Sa'ad came to him and said, my brother, I am one of the wealthiest from the Ansar. And I tell you, I'm going to split everything I have into half. And I will give you half and I will remain with the other half. Wow. We would not do that for our real brothers and sisters, would we? We cheat them. When someone's passed away, inheritance comes, it has to be shared. What's legitimately not yours, it belongs to them. We still don't want to give it to them. And we are millionaires sometimes. I've seen the problem is bigger with those who have more wealth. They become more miserly. You find a multi-millionaire fighting for 100,000 because his father passed away. It's supposed to go to his sister and he doesn't. That is a test for him. He was never going to get wealth besides that which was written for him. And if he ate something that wasn't his, the hadith says, إِنَّمَا هِيَ قِطْعَةٌ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَلْيَأْخُذْهَا أَوْ لِيَذَرْهَا it is indeed a piece of the fire of Jahannam, of hellfire. He can either take it or leave it. Subhanallah, what a powerful piece of advice of Rasulullah May we be encouraged to sort out our matters and on top of that, be charitable, especially when it comes to our family members, my beloved brothers and sisters. Take a look at Abdurrahman ibn Auf radiallahu anhu. So what happened? He says, May Allah bless you. May Allah bless you. Show me where is the marketplace. I'm a businessman. Show me where is the marketplace. So he refused to take from the wealth of Sa'ad ibn Rabi'ah anhu. Although legitimately, had he taken it, it would have been okay. He refused to take. He says, show me the marketplace. And this shows us, my brothers, my sisters, when you work hard, your own perspiration, and you've earned something, there is greater blessing in it than you can imagine. There is greater blessing in it than you can imagine. Call out to Allah. Don't give up your faith. Don't give up your duty unto Allah. Call out to the same Allah who is the owner of your sustenance to give you, and Allah will open your doors. Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu. He came back the same day. Imagine he arrived at the souk of Banu Qaynuqa, where there were a lot of Jewish people. He dealt with them for the day. The same evening he came back with some foodstuffs. Subhanallah. When he left, he had no money on him, zero, nothing. He went, he did some deal somehow, a few dealings, mashallah. He came back with some food items, mashallah. The following day, he went. A few days later, he got married. Now to get married, you know what you need, isn't it? You need to pay a mahar. You actually need to do quite a bit, subhanallah. And the Prophet ﷺ saw him some days later. And he had a yellow mark on his clothing. Some say it was of perfume. A mark of perfume. You know when they when you use the perfume, sometimes it leaves a bit of a mark on your clothing. So he says, Oh, what is this, O oh, Abdurrahman? You know now to have perfume on is a luxury, mashallah, you know. What is this? He says, There's a word to Ya Rasulullah. He says, I got married, O oh, Messenger, peace be upon him. He says, And what did you give her? What did you give her as a mahar? Subhanallah. So the Prophet 
was told that he gave a certain amount of gold coins. Gold coins. Wow. In, in, in a week, you're already giving gold coins as mahr. Subhanallah. You know what he says? The Prophet ﷺ told him, Awlim, walaw bishatim. Have a little party. Have a little walima. Even if it means with the sacrificing of one sheep. One. One animal. But have a little party. Call your friends and you know, enjoy it, mashallah. It's something to be happy with. What do you learn from this? This is a sahabi who just made his money. He got married. And who were his best friends? Well, I promise you, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, must have been so close to him. But he didn't know that he got married. Now, I want all the parents here to listen very carefully. And I want the young people and the adults to listen very carefully. And even those who are far away. Don't feel bad when someone leaves you out a list. When you, they invite you to, or they don't invite you to the weddings of their sons or daughters. Your duty is to make a dua for them. Here is the messenger, peace be upon him, who did not know that Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu got married. He didn't even know about it. Forget about being invited. If it was us, and, and we asked a friend of ours what happened, and he says, I got married. He said, that's it. Done. Block. Block from WhatsApp. Block from this. Block from that. What buddy am I? I'm no friend of yours. Man, you got married and you didn't invite me. My sisters, a plate of biryani is not going to kill you if you don't have it, man. <laughs> Some people die for it. They're looking for where people have died and they're looking for where there's a wedding. Why? Because when someone dies, they get free food. And that also is wrong, by the way. And when someone's getting married, they get free food. That's it. So they want inv to be invited just to go there. You know, you tuck up as best as you can. You show all your accessories. You've got everything done. Some of the people who attend the wedding function spend more on their own clothing and everything else than the people who are getting married themselves. MashaAllah, the barakah. May Allah forgive us. Keep it simple, inshallah, there'll be more barakah. Look at Abdurrahman ibn Awf. He kept it simple. The Prophet ﷺ didn't know. Don't feel bad. And don't have such a massive thing where you're wasting money. Invite the people. What is more important, wallahi, is the barakah, the dua. Make a prayer. The Prophet ﷺ told him, Barakallahu laka fi malika wa ahlik. Listen to the dua. That changed his life. For me to attend a function is not important. The dua that you will receive is way more important. Remember that. Many weddings are grand, but the marriage doesn't last. Right? Many people take bank loans in order to show the Joneses that guess what? We have had a marriage just like yours. But they don't know the Joneses have bitcoins. May Allah forgive us. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. It's a reality. Don't compete with the Joneses. Not at all. Whatever you can manage, alhamdulillah. The barakah. Listen, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not invited to the wedding. He made a dua. May Allah give you barakah. Genuine dua. May Allah give you barakah in your wealth and in your family. You know how many children he left behind? Subhanallah. Do you know how big his family grew? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I want to cry when I think of it. Where are we? We're trying to compete for the dunya. The dunya, the worldly materialistic life will run faster than you. Remember, the more you run behind it, the further it will run. But you run behind Allah's command. And I, try, I, I promise you, the dunya will be thrown at your feet. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Here is Abdurrahman ibn Awf. He received the dua of the Prophet ﷺ. Immediately, his wealth started multiplying. His wealth started multiplying, subhanallah. It's amazing. This man... I actually try to think about how he grew and how he developed. And I say to myself, where are we? Talk about missing salah. No salah must. He was a man who didn't drink even during the period of Jahiliyyah. It's reported he was one of those friends of Abu Bakr, a Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Remember I told you when you're with friends, it's easier for you to do something. When they abstain from vice, you abstain from it as well. When they do something good, you do it as well. So therefore, make sure your friends are the best of friends. Choose them wisely because their habits become yours and yours sometimes become theirs. So this man, Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu, the lesson I drew from his marriage is very, very interesting. He had a walima thereafter. Few of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And mashallah, the Prophet sallallahu prayed for him. There came a time when the battles had started. 
He participated in a lot of them. And in the most important ones, he was always there. But he gave a lot. It's reported that he gave 40,000 gold coins on one occasion. Another occasion, he gave half of his wealth. They don't even know how much it was. On another occasion, he gave 500 horses and another 500 saddles. Subhanallah, 500 horses. Do you know how much is one horse today? It's like giving 500 Mercedes Benz S500s. Yeah, I promise you, 500 of them. And this was a man who started yesterday. And there were no Bitcoins at the time, by the way. Not at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us what is halal. But my brothers and sisters, remember it's the dua of the Prophet ﷺ. Please make dua for one another. Make dua for people who get married. Make dua for those who come together. Even if you were not invited, don't be sad. Be happy. Be happy for the happiness of your brother. That's a sign of a mu'min. Be happy for the happiness of your sister. Today when we see people breaking, subhanAllah, we become excited, happy. I remember I was... I overheard a discussion of two people at somebody's wedding and they were talking of another wedding and they said, do you remember that wedding? And the guy says, yeah, I remember. Oh, the, the, the groom came down in helicopter. Do you remember? And the guy says, yeah, I remember. He says, that was about two years ago. Are they still married? Not yet broken? And I'm thinking that word yet actually made me scared. Not yet broken. It means like the norm is to marry and break. So it's, if you're, if you're uh, together, then it's abnormal Astaghfirullah. that's the attitude we have today where people get married and we're waiting for them we're waiting for something to go wrong and when it, when anything goes wrong a little bit of gossip we're the first to spread it my sister my brother you want the blessings of allah well ask allah to bless others and the angels will pray for you may allah bless you in a similar way may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us genuineness so this man abdurrahman ibn awf radiallahu an he used to look after the widows and the orphans, even the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. He used to send a few gifts here and there. And he used to make sure that he looked after them, even after the Prophet ﷺ passed on. He used to take care of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. He used to give gifts. He used to make sure that whatever they needed, he would do. And when he passed away, he passed away at the age of 75. He passed away at the age of 75. So he was 10 years younger than the Prophet ﷺ, but he passed away at the time of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. When he passed away, what do you think his wealth was? What do you think his wealth was? Well, listen to this. I had to write the figures down. He had written to give to charity for, sorry, 500 thousand gold coins 500,000 gold coins to give to charity that was in his will and you and I know you cannot write a will of more than one third you know that so on top of that he said anyone who participated in the battle of Badr give them 400 coins there were hundred people from among them who were still alive they all got 100 gold coins each we don't even have a single gold coin right 100 gold coins each from who? Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu who made hijrah fi sabilillah. He was in Medina Munawwara. He had zero the day he started. Zero. And he did not take wealth from Sa'd ibn al-Rabi' radiallahu anhu. Rather, he worked hard. He did business. He came. He used to be charitable. He was known as the person who was a shakir, which means he was so thankful to Allah. He used to spend what he had in the good cause. He used to look for the poor and give them quietly. With us, the poor look for us, subhanAllah. And still we don't give them. We don't give them, subhanAllah. Surah Al-Duha, Allah says, ask for the one who is asking you. The one who is asking you, don't rebuke him. Don't rebuke him. Why? SubhanAllah, it's Allah's test. Even if a person looks like he or she perhaps is using that money on something negative. Sometimes we see street kids and I see them in my country. They're sniffing glue. Do you know what that means? They have a little packet, milk packet or something. They put glue in it and they're sniffing it to get a little bit high, you know. So when you tell them hi, instead of saying hi, they say, yes, subhanAllah. Yeah. You know, say hi, say yeah. Which means, yes, we are high. But 
when you see that now in your heart, in my heart, I feel like I don't want to really give this person because if I'm going to give them something, perhaps they will be go, they will probably become even higher, you know. <laughs> so what you do, you just say, you smile at them, oh, have a nice day, have a nice day, you know, or something like that, but you don't rebuke them. You, look at what you're using your money on. Look at what's happening. You're, you're a this and you're a that with all negative words. That's not a mu'min. Like I said earlier, don't become negative because of the negativity of someone else. You remain positive. You remain a good person. You remain a kind person, even if others are unkind. That's what makes you a believer. People can say the nastiest things about you. Still be yourself. Smile, subhanallah. Yes, where you have to respond because maybe people are accusing you of something. Subhanallah, there are two ways of doing things. You either leave it to Allah, like Allah tells Maryam alayhi salatu wassalam, and Allah says to Zakaria alayhi salatu wassalam, to remain silent. It can work. But sometimes you have the right to, in a proper way, to respond. But you don't do it in a derogatory way. When someone asks you, reply in a positive way. Give them if you think that it's okay, they deserve, etc. It's Allah. Allah gave you, you give. Allah will give you more. And you know when you pledge, I can teach you something about pledging. When you pledge, what happens is you say, I'm going to give 50 pounds a week to these orphans or to this cause. Allah has written their sustenance and it's going to come through you so he will give you first and then it will go to them so you keep getting more and you don't know wow i'm getting so much but allah says hang on if you stop giving another person will give they're not going to stop but the fact that you are giving we're going to give you first so say you get 500 and you wonder why because there's 50 in there for the orphans and that's why the hadith says Ma naqasa malun min sadaqa. different variations of the wording but what it means is Wealth has never become depleted because of a charity that was given. Evidence of it is Abdurrahman ibn Awf. Every time he gave, he got more. Subhanallah. So he wrote 500,000 coins for the poor or for Sabilillah, for charity. And he gave 400 gold coins for 100 of those who were remaining from the people who took part in the battle of Badr. And on top of that, he had 1,000 camels in Medina, 100 horses in Medina, and 3,000 sheep in Medina Munawwara. And he was a person a few years before that, he had zero. And on top of that, he had four wives, and one of them had just given out an amount of 80,000 gold coins. Wow, wow. So you don't even know how much they had. I say, if you work out what he gave in charity, and you say, for example, that's the maximum he could give, and it was one third of his wealth, you have to multiply that by three to get what exactly he was worth. Otherwise, you wouldn't know. And it goes into the millions and the billions. We talk about people today who've become wealthy in the world. I promise you, when I sit and read 500,000 gold coins, I think to myself, super wealthy. Subhanallah. 500,000 was only for charity. Double that, say a million, Multiplied by three, three million gold coins, minimum, minimum. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. My brothers and sisters, do you realize that half an hour is up? May Allah forgive us. Wallahi, 28 minutes, 21 seconds. And you know what I said before? That I will end on the dot by the will of Allah. But I've spoken about Abdurrahman ibn Awf. I hope I've inspired myself and yourselves, reminded myself, inspired you, yourselves to actually become closer to Allah. There are a few very, very interesting points that I raised and I pray that we can all take heed by the will of Allah, make it easy for your children to marry and don't delay. Look at this. He got married without delaying. The barakah came. The minute we delay, delay, the barakah is getting snatched away. Because when you know who you're marrying and you're just delaying for no reason, you know what happens? It's just a time for barakah to be snatched away. What will happen is only haram, only that which is detested. In most cases, let's not delay it. If you make easy for your children to get married, Allah will make your path to Jannah easy because you've helped them in a great act of worship. Allah will help you in earning the reward of the act of worship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the true senses. I know there are parents who actually say, yes, yes, yes. But they're the ones making it difficult for their children because we know they send us little emails to come and try and help them. And when we do, we become enemy number one. SubhanAllah. Why? Because fathers are racist sometimes. May Allah forgive us.
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. And I still have 10 seconds so I can give you the smile again. Here goes with braces. MashaAllah.